I mean, just such a fresh anointing. And uh, wives, don't take it personal. Amen? Don't take it personal when your husband's like, nah. don't take it personal. Because the Word of God says that, I mean, even Lord Jesus Christ couldn't do miracles in his hometown. Ain't that amazing? God himself, right, Pastor, couldn't do miracles. God Almighty. Peter denied him three times after telling him, oh, I love you, I'll do this for you, I'll die for you. No, before the chicken. Yeah, before the girl chicken crows. All right, let's not get this started. I already wished to that garden. Before the rooster crows. Crows three times. Hallelujah. And sure enough, right? Later on, it just took place, just like that. Amen. So don't get offended, just because God knows. God knows that your beloved is just not listening, right? But the beauty is, is that you're like, Father, I know this to be true. That Lord Jesus, you came and took everything on that cross. I love what this beloved Son of God said. Cancer, that's just a word. That ain't nothing to my God. Amen. Amen. And uh, <laughs> we got, we shared a laugh because PJ and I said, thank God we got a big butt. <laughs> Amen. And ain't that the truth? Thank God we have a big butt. The biggest butt there is. Amen. But God. Say with me, but God. But God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Our worship service this evening is how to obtain the promise from God. Amen. How to obtain the promise from God. And I believe this is suiting. It's per perfect. We're going to skip over the, the birthday song because um, uh, the birthday girl isn't here. And um, we have other birthdays this week. So praise God. We're just going to skip over that. Okay. I told you this was going to happen. <laughs> Y'all pray for me. I'm just human. Okay. I just had to get that out. Okay. Pray for me. We're in church service. Hallelujah. But uh, I did mention this to Trish last night. And she said no. And I said Okay. Look what happened. Should we just move on? Let's move on. Praise God. Okay. We're going to be in Deuteronomy 3, 34. We're going to be in John 10, 10, and also Matthew 4, 17. Um, I'm just overwhelmed as far as how the Holy Spirit has put all this together. And um, I pray in Jesus' name that, that Father blesses you with a fresh anointing. Now, we got to keep in mind that when we, when we ask God... When we ask God, when we approach God for what our needs are, we have to be careful to not make those needs at the same level with God. May I say that again? We have to be careful. God already knows every need that you have, not only today, but forever. And He's God Almighty. Can I get an amen? So we have to be careful when we approach God that our heart is adjusted to the fact that you're God Almighty. I'm just approaching you, being thankful. Amen. How many of us? How, can, how, how many of us are is thankful tonight? Amen. Hallelujah! Look at all the hands go. I'm thankful. Hallelujah! I'm thankful. Amen. And now I know. Now be honest with me, okay? You don't have to raise your hand, but if you feel like it, please do. How many of you all feel thankful? Oh my goodness! This is open arms to me, church. Amen. I didn't expect all the hands to go. Amen. I feel thankful, amen? But how, I love what our, our beloved brother just shared though. But now what happens when something takes place and now you no longer feel it, right? No longer look like it, amen? Right? Church starts at 6.30. That was a... <laughs> While all of leadership comes in. <laughs> <laughs> Love you guys so much. Praise God. Everybody say happy birthday, Kathy. Happy birthday, Kathy. Amen. And uh, praise God, as always. See, I put my foot in my mouth, right? I bumped my gums, and look what God did. God said, here. And, and so my beloved daughter was right. Amen. So everybody, let's just go ahead and sing happy birthday to the beloved Kathy. Amen. Praise God.
this? Praise God. All right, amen. How to obtain the promise from God, amen. This was me. This was me. This was the promise of God. And I was like, how come I cannot get it? For years, right? For years. Now remember, all we're doing is worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not the teacher. I have nothing to do with anything. I'm just a mouthpiece, amen. We're blessing the Lord Jesus Christ. And Holy Spirit tonight will bless us with life-changing revelation to receive the promise of God. Amen. amen. Notice there's only one promise, amen? amen? Promise of God. The promise of God is, and we're not going to jump because we're going to go through this, amen? How many of you want the promise of God? Amen. Because it's in that promise that every good, hallelujah, and perfect thing is, amen? And so we're going to go ahead and press forward. Yeah, is it just me? Have you ever felt this way with the Lord? Right? Have you ever felt this way? Like, like I, I, I want to, I, I hear this a lot. I hear this a lot. And, and, and I confess to you, it, it, it irks me when I hear somebody say, I want to I want to go to the next level with the Lord. And I'm like, what, do you, what does that even mean? Well, I, I, just, I just wish that I was on fire all the time. Then choose to be. Ain't that the truth? I love what Pastor John says. If you're believing for healing, you get your tail up every morning and you thank God that I'm healed. And I'm going to act like it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to act like it. Right? I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to wait for some. Listen. Yes. Be still. Wait for the Lord. Don't get religious with me. Try to throw a hissy fit in church. Don't do that. Yes, we wait on the Lord. But as we wait on the Lord, we have to, Christian, prepare ourselves for the breakthrough and blessings, amen? amen? And my question to you is, are you preparing yourself for this anointing of the Lord? Because it's easy to say, well, I just want to get to the next level with God because I see all these Christians, they're doing this, they're doing that. There's problem number one. You're looking at everybody else. Look at God, amen? Stop comparing your worship life with somebody else. We all worship differently, amen? How can I get an amen? There's some of you that may spend six, seven hours in the Word every day. There's some of you that may spend, may spend six to seven minutes, right? But you cannot quantify your relationship with the Lord. The relationship with the Lord is how thankful are you? Oh, there's no words. Mom Deb said it, there's no word, right? Some of you, Sister Rocky, are going, amen, right? How thankful are you, amen? You know, I'm so thankful for Trish. But can I tell you? I don't tell her thank you all the time. Amen. Get, get out of this hole, Pastor. You gotta get myself out of this hole, help me, Pastor. But see, she knows my heart, and it doesn't take for me to say thank you all the time. Does that make sense? Does God know your heart of thankfulness? Amen. Amen. Okay, praise God. Let's move on. Let's move forward. Before we get into this, we got to talk about the old self and the new self. Amen? My old self was one way, dead and gone. Praise God, right, Brother William? Dead and gone. Hallelujah. Listen, when I first became born again, when I first received Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit moved me. I know this to be true. Amen? I didn't think the same no more. I didn't even hear the same. I didn't look the same. But guess what? The old feelings can try to come back. The old feelings can say to me, feelings. Right? Say like my mom, feelings. feelings. That's a thick accent right there. The old feelings would come back. And the old feelings try to trigger something to make me act a certain way. Amen? It's your responsibility as a beloved child of God to take every thought captive. Amen? How many of us, how many of us tr try every day that when something takes place, whether it's something that you saw at Walmart or at a grocery store, or maybe you're driving, somebody cut you off, or driving too slow. Maybe you're stuck behind a tractor, I don't know. And you know, and you feel like your flesh. I know, PJ, we forgive you. <laughs> See, Brother Peter just worshiping, driving a tractor. No, he got, he got a hand on How many of you, how many of you, you could feel your flesh try to rise up, right? Maybe some of you even say something. Man, what is this? Right? You see, right there in that moment, if you're by yourself in your vehicle, there's no human to hold you accountable for the way your actions are. That's right. You are. And the question 
is that the beloved child of God, you know that there is accountability, and he lives on the inside. And it's time for us to repent and say, Father, forgive me. I can't believe I even thought that way. I can't believe I had that outburst. Father, rebuke that, because that's the devil trying to make me act a certain way that I'm no longer a part of that. Can I get an amen? amen. Hallelujah. Say with the old self and new self. So Holy Spirit, like I said earlier, is going to tie everything together and what we've been going through, it feels like, for the past month. All the days now are just bleeding together. Can you guys believe it's already March? Yes. What happened to this year? Is it just me? No. I had a gut, brother Dustin, I looked the calendar twice today. I'm like, it's March already? I thought we were still in January. Maybe, okay, praise God, brother David, along with me. Right? I'm like, why is it so hot outside? It's only January. <laughs> Some of you are rebuking me. You're like, oh, I love the warm weather. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I do too. I just don't like the bugs. <laughs> Rebuke the bugs. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, say it with me. You self. In order to get this and to go through this worship service, bear with me now. We're going to go into the old story and the new story. Amen. Amen. Now remember, please, let's all do this together. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we don't approach you with our mind. We approach you with all of our hearts trusting you, Lord. And Father, we ask you, hallelujah. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. <laughs> That's a jam right there, ain't it? <laughs> Say with me, get out of this line. Get into worship. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we're going to talk about a little story. Exodus 14, 20, 34. Deuteronomy 34. Now I know you guys said, you guys, you didn't tell me, Pastor, about Exodus. And we're just going to go over that briefly. We're going to go over Deuteronomy 34. In Exodus 14, you saw what happened. We're in the old story. We're in the old covenant. We're in the old testament. Amen. We're with this man called Moses. Amen. Oh, Brother Moses, anointed man of God. Amen? Amen. Anointed man of God. Hallelujah. We, we, took, we discussed this maybe a couple weeks ago. He was in royalty. I, I'd like for you to just get this picture real quick in the way Holy Spirit teaches this message because I'm barely hanging on, so help me. Pray for me. I'm barely hanging on. But I'd like you to get this picture of Moses seated in royalty. Servants. Royalty. Say that with me. Royalty. Royalty. But yet because of conviction of who he is in Christ. In adopting Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He knew I have nothing to do with this. This is not my identity. And he turned away from that. See, this is a hard message to preach, especially in this tone and in this part of the message. Because there's many of us who strive to live a gooder and gooder life. There's many of us who strive, right, whether it's working really hard or going to different uh, jobs or finding a different career, wanting to have more income, right? Because we believe that once we start making more income, we can have a better life. I'm just speaking the truth now, amen? There's many of you going, no, no. And praise God for that. That's contentment in the Lord, and you have that relationship with God where that don't mean nothing. But see, we're all not there yet, but that's okay, amen? Where I'm getting at is that where Moses was at, he had everything. He didn't have to do anything. Are you hearing me now? He didn't have to leave his position. He could have just stayed, waiting for, right? Waiting for the Pharaoh to die, whatever it was, and then eventually he would become the man. But conviction, say that word with me, conviction. We all have it. His name is Holy Spirit. Conviction comes upon your heart. Conviction. See, now when we have conviction, we can either run away in disobedience with God, and act like, oh, well, I hear you, Lord, but I got to do this. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't have to do anything. 
God gives you free will. But it's in that conviction with the Lord where here's the dividing part of your life. Are you ready to give up the careers that you've been chasing for? Are you ready to give up all the things that you've been wanting and knowing? Father, I know where this is taking me. You convicted me. My heart is getting cold towards you, and now I'm starting to chase after just stuff and things. I'm starting to not see eye to eye with my spouse, and we're always fighting because we're, we took our eyes off. We thought this was a blessing, but it wasn't. It was a curse. And we're running after this curse. Father, help me stop me. Amen? Say, let me stop me. See, right now, God is speaking to a few of you right now. Don't look at me, though. Don't get offended, okay? But if God is speaking to you this way, right? Don't you owe it to him to listen? Because he goes before you. I almost got stuck. Exodus 20. Say with me, 20. 20. This is what happened. So the baptism of, uh, of, of Moses and all the followers took place. When, when that glorious day took place. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Anointed man of God. Right? Worship Yahweh. Worship God Almighty. Hallelujah. Worship. Lift up your hands with me. Just lift up your hands. In the same way, this is how God asked Moses to lift up his hands. Just lift up your hands. Right? Just lift up your hands over the water. See, right now, God is asking, lift up your hands over this report. Lift up your hands over these children. Lift up your hands over your marriage. See, Father God, right now, say, lift up your hands. Amen? You feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. He's God Almighty. Right now, all of heaven sees what you're doing. And He sees your heart because He knows every need. Hands of protection over our children, amen? Divine protection, right? Thank you, Father. You put your hands down, amen? In Exodus 20, this is where the covenant took place. Say it with me, that's old. That's old. That's the old covenant, right? The old covenant took place. And the next, here in Deuteronomy 34, you see the promised land. Say it with me, promise. Promise. Hallelujah. This is the promised land that God promised all his children ever since Abraham. Right? Promise his children. Amen? But this is where I want to take you to and we're going to move forward because Moses didn't get to step into that promised land. Alright? Now let me be clear. If Lord Jesus Christ never came to earth and this is all we have of the Holy Bible of God, my tone and my teaching would be completely different because my Holy Spirit would tell me you're not you're a Gentile. You're not, my, you're not my people. So when I talk about Moses, if Lord Jesus Christ never come, guess what? I would be talking about this man that right now, this day, a lot of people are worshiping like a god. Right now, this day, there's many, many, many of God's children that worship Moses as if he was God. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. Amen. I rebuke that. But let me make this clear, okay? If Lord Jesus Christ never came to this earth, if God never provided His perfect sacrifice, and this is all I have to go by, I will be preaching Moses and going, there's something anointed about this man. And we must worship him because he knows the way. Because see, he got there. Look, let me, let me rewind. He got there to the promised land. You hear me, Pastor? Moses got there. He showed what no one could sh show. He did what God asked all his people to do. He did it. So God speaks clearly to Moses. So we're going to go ahead and include him in the Godhead. Does that make sense? See, there's so many confused right now. This is good. Because if Jesus Christ never came, Never came. Are you hearing me, church? If Lord Jesus Christ never came, this would be the teaching of today. Okay, now we're, okay, good. Hallelujah. The anointing is it kicked in. Everybody's like, yeah, I, I get it, right? Because guess what? There is no New Testament. There's no New Covenant. This is what we got to go by. Can I get an amen? Don't get too religious with me, family. Remember, we're worshiping Lord Jesus Christ and only Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So even Lord Jesus Christ knows right now through the power of the Holy Spirit what we're 
trying to expose and get out here in the open. Amen? That here's Brother Moses. Yes, I said it. Brother Moses. And we will be all in heaven together one day. And I want to hear all the stories. Hallelujah. All the stories. You mean really where you stepped it was dry? I already know all the said, What did I say? Yeah, it was dry. Dry ground, amen? Did you touch the water when you walked by? No idea. Huh? Did you, you, you touch the water that way? Did, did you look and see? Oh, look at the fish. Was it like an aquarium? Well, don't you wonder about things like that? I, I do, right? Did you have to yell at that? Come on, keep moving! Huh? Did you have kids trying to grab a fish? Ain't that sweet? But the promise, the promise, Moses got to see, but he did not get to enter. And I want to explain why here in the Word. Verse 4 in chapter 34 of Deuteronomy. And the Lord said to him, This is the land that I swore to give Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when I said, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your own eyes, but you will not cross into it. The book of Deuteronomy means the copy of the law. But isn't it beautiful when you, when you talk about that word Deuteronomy? In Greek, Deuteronomus. Deuteronomist. Forgive me. I'm a little wrestling with that. When you talk about the copy of the law in Deuteronomy, it's easy to talk about the copy or the extent of the letter. That's another translation for Deuteronomy, letters of the word. You could read Exodus, then you could read Deuteronomy, and then you could, because you got to keep in mind now, how many total commandments were there? 613. Not just 10, 613. And so it's easy to say, yes, this carries over, right, Deuteronomy. This carries over. It's a copy of that. But the true copy of it is what we're going to show here. In these next few slides. Amen. Say it with me. Give me new. How many of you want a new blessing from the Lord? Amen. Amen. Every hand goes up. God sees it. Brother got feet up. Sis got feet up. Amen. If you want a new blessing from the Lord. Amen. Say amen. Amen. Praise God. God hears your heart. Now we have a new story. That's a new story. Now. Say it with me. New testimony. Right, Brother Brandon? So when the Bible tells me that there's a new, that means there's a Oh, right? When the devil says that something is resurrected, that means something died, right? And that's what we're going to get into. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, say with me life, life death, 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 resurrection. resurrection. This is the good news. Amen. amen. This is the gospel. Amen. Good news. This means that no matter what this world does to you, it cannot take your breath away. For your very next breath is in the presence of God Almighty. Amen? I love what the beloved Son of God just said. I say I claim to be a Christian. How am I acting like? Won't that just preach 24-7, right? For the rest of eternity. Amen? You say who you are, then why aren't you acting like that? Can I get an amen? amen? Say this with me. Beginning, beginning middle, middle, and end. Amen. Beginning, middle, and end. Praise God. So when we talk about the love of the Father, it's not, it's not up here right now, but when you get a chance, if you're taking notes, write 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, it talks about how God's people were baptized into Moses when they crossed the water. Say with me, baptism. Right. And now you see the picture of Lord Jesus Christ here, and this took place in Matthew 4. There's other places in the gospel. Of when he was baptized, that's why we have it over our baptistry, amen? This is agape speaking, amen? And this is, say with me, baptism. Next, we talk about the covenant that was issued in the old, the covenant of old, right? Now you remember, the covenant of old was issued because we were disobedient. The law was given, you guys have to understand and receive this. The law of God was given because, for one, we chose 
We don't want you. We chose that with God Almighty. We don't want anything to do with you. So this law that was issued for Moses was a law of mm. I'm not even going to put a word behind it. Can you do that way? Mm. Mm. How many of you got that from your parents when you were younger? Oh, man. My mom used to bite her lip. My mom used to bite her lip. And when she looked at me, she bit her lip. I'm like, oh, hold on. I got to go, guys. <laughs> you, you square it up real quick, right? Right? When my mom went like this, bro, that means I'm going to give it to you when we get home. Right? Oh. Right? <laughs> Brother William said he still gets it from Kathy. Amen. Y'all pray for the birthday girl, okay? There's no need for the biting the lip, okay? Amen. <laughs> Say this with me, covenant. You see the different tone now in the old covenant, in the old law. God was like this. Mm. But now you see Lord Jesus Christ in the new covenant of God. Father God saying, not this, but open arms. Amen. Anybody. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody. Praise God. I, I, come as you are. Right, beloved? Come as you are. Right? God will never turn anyone away. Amen. And you have Lord Jesus right here to show, to show the world. This is a new covenant. It's say with me, it's a new story. Yeah. See, the beloved church family, what, what God is trying to tell us right now, that despite, despite how long it takes for Lord Jesus to come, we believe real soon. Amen? We do. Look at the way the world is acting, right? But God keeps reminding us that it doesn't matter what happens to us today, what the report was from, from a lab call, whatever it is, right? In the name of Jesus, we have the power in Jesus' name, to say, I crucify it, and I have resurrection power in Jesus' name, amen? I have resurrection power in Jesus' name, amen? And say with me, this is my covenant. Wow. It's a new covenant, it's a new promise with God. And you remember earlier, it all gets gooder and gooder, family. You remember earlier, Brother Moses. Am I, am I, am I bad talking, Brother Moses? He's an anointed man of God, amen? You know, Earlier there was a stick up here, praise God. There was a stick up here. There, let me do this. Right? And don't you love it? Don't you love it? That the moment, that the moment Father speaks to Moses, he goes, what's in your hand? God can make anything appear out of thin air. God could put a golden scepter, a golden sword in his hand. But see, Father don't need it. All Father needs is you. And he will equip you, amen? But listen to the anointing behind this message. Because even though this was in his hand, and this was, okay, well, all right. You said that I'm fully equipped, Lord. You equip me. You asked me to go do something. Even though I have all these doubts about myself, I asked who, who, who sent me, you said I am. That completely rebuked all that. Right? Because I can't say I am not, I am not, I am not. Be careful. Be careful. Say with me, I am a beloved child of God. And this beloved child of God, Moses, took his cane and said, okay, you've equipped me. Don't you love it when he threw it on the ground and it turned into a snake? Amen. Amen. But then the devil, Satan himself, did the same thing. Yeah. And, and our snake ate the other one. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. See, we need moments like this that when the world tries to show you its head, when the world tries to show you its snake, you say, uh uh, my God, my God will chew up your snake. I said, stay, stay. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, Notice. <laughs> Notice. That was good enough. Notice. That it's that same rod that he used in the relationship with Moses. Amen. He struck that rock. Water came out. That's Christ. Now you would think that you'd have a relationship with God, right? 
Amen. Am I speaking to you, church? Yeah. Say with me, I have a relationship. I, have a I know you. I know you hear from the Holy Spirit. You speak to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. This is what Lord Jesus Christ paid for. But then what happened when God spoke to Moses and said, now I want you to speak to the rock. Now I want you to have a relationship with the rock. Oh, hallelujah. His name is Jesus. Amen. I want you to speak to the rock. Hallelujah. I want you to speak to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to speak to Jesus. Amen. And unfortunately, what did Moses do? That's why he didn't go into the promise. That's why he didn't go into that promise land. Amen. I won't do it again. Oh, I love you. And that's why he did not go into that promised land. Say with me, but God. But God. We have a Savior. We have the Messiah. We have the perfect, beloved Son of God. The only Son of God. We have God's sacrifice. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. And guess what, beloved Hannah? He provided the promise. Amen. 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 Let's just keep our praise. Amen. This is the fulfilled promise of God, amen? Fulfilled promise of God, amen? You saw the pictures, you see? It's because of Lord Jesus Christ that no longer God is trapped behind someplace. He's now out here in the open. God is a spirit, amen? And he's, he's, he's flowing, amen? And whoever would call in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, you could just see it. God goes, oh. Right? It's kind of like playing, you know, tag, right? You know, you, you try to get to home base, amen? That's what God is trying to do with all his children here on this world, amen? He's trying to find a home in every soul. Holy Spirit's knocking on the doors of every heart right now. Even if you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior right now, God wants the best for you. Yeah. Are you living your best life right now? Oh, yeah. Amen? Yeah. Are you living your best life right now? It's okay if you're not, because guess what? It just gets gooder and gooder. Oh, if you allow him right now, will you allow him, amen, to say with me, fulfilled promise. Fulfilled and we know where the Messiah sits right now at the right hand of God Almighty, amen. So the question is, how to obtain a promise from God? How to obtain this promise, amen? And this is what we're going to get into. You guys remember, say with me, R3. R3. R3 talked about John 10, 10, the devil wants to steal, kill, destroy Amen. Say with me, I am recovered. I am resurrected. I am restored. Amen. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Amen. When your, when your mindset is, is, is completely sold out with this, do y'all hear that? Yeah. Praise God. Thank you for being honest with me. That was kind of hard. If I had to do it a couple more times, I'd probably knock myself out. Amen. This right here is a spiritual warfare. Yes, yes, there is spiritual warfare going on in the atmosphere. Amen? There's spiritual warfare going on in the atmosphere. But you have to keep this in mind right here. That this is where it's taking place. This is where it's taking place. Right now, God is asking is there any question to you, my beloved child, how much I love you? Is there any question of what I did for you through that cross that you think that there's something lacking? Here's another one God is asking you right now. Do you think I owe you something? Oh. We live, we live now in a culture where we Right? If the pastor don't preach a certain way or act a certain way, if the elders don't do this, or if the church doesn't do this, I'm just going to go somewhere else. Is that reverence for the Lord? Is that Holy Spirit leading? To take you away from God's holy people? To take you away from worship? All because you have a hissy fit? May I just be, can I, can I preach the honest, honest truth? Just because I'm not happy where I want to be, or I don't get things the way I want, or I want a title, or I want a position, or I want you to play this song after worship music, and I want you to do this, and I want you to come and visit this person, and I want you to do that, and if I say no, well, I don't want to do anything with that church. That's just the world we live in right now. So God is asking, do I owe you anything? 
Lord Jesus Christ, I was asking, am I your Lord? Am I your master? Do I reign in your body? Now listen, family. Now when we say amen and yes to all those things, right? Now Holy Spirit wants to ask. Now Holy Spirit wants to ask. Oh, it gets gooder. Are you honoring me in your body? Got quiet in your pastor. I got convicted over this. Many of you know I celebrated a year, a year this week of being a vegan. And it's not because I, listen, I rebuke them. I don't worship animals and all. I don't. I worship only Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But God told me I need to change my diet because I was eating and the enemy was going to have his way with me. Amen. That's my own personal conviction. I don't push my diet on anybody. I don't talk about it. But I'm telling you right now, there's ways that you can honor God in your body starting today. Will you sacrifice something? What did it cost you to follow Christ? What did it cost God? Everything, right? So now it's time for us, beloved church family, as a new covenant church, to start acting like, Father, I'm willing to sacrifice whatever you ask of me so that I can bless your Holy Spirit presence in my life. Amen? Amen? Are we, are, we, are, we, are we listening to music that we're not supposed to be listening to? Huh? Are we doing extracurricular activities that you know that it's not God? Are we putting things into our body that we know it's poison? Huh? It's amazing how quiet it got in here, right? But just let His presence flow. Listen, don't get upset at me. Take this up with the Lord. Amen? But Father God, right now I'm saying, are you prepared? Are you prepared to give it to me so that I can bless you with a promise? Somebody told me this week, oh, I'm just happy if I make it to heaven. If! No question. No. Last time I checked, God did a full short thing. Amen. His name is Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. His name is Lord Jesus, right? And here, my heart, that's, that's what I just told us. So, I mean, there's no question. Well, I'm just happy if I make it. This is between you and God, amen? Say with me, R3. R3. Recovered, resurrected, restored, amen? So we talked about that. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But here comes Lord Jesus Christ. I was lost, I am recovered. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. I was lost, I am recovered, amen? I was lost, every one of you was lost. I was lost, I am recovered. Amen. And it's all through the blood of Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Here's another one. Get this, PJ. I was sick. I was. I was sick. But guess what? I died in Christ. Amen. And now I am resurrected. Amen. Hallelujah. I am resurrected. Amen. So the question is, did you die in Christ? Did you die in Christ? Because if you didn't die in Christ, there's a reason why you were so fearful of this world. You're afraid of dying. Yeah, amen. But when you know that you've done died in Christ, and right now you're living your eternal life, hallelujah, this world can't do anything to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I don't want to miss that one. Amen. Read the scripture back in the book of Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I'm crucified with Christ. See, if you're sick, something has to die. If you want resurrection power. Now if you want to just get a bad day, if you want just medicine, then you could just this is between you and the Lord. Just get religious with God. Play the Christian part. Oh, I've been a Christian all these years. This is just the way it's gonna be. Well, you live it in God Almighty. Amen. I ask people, well, what are we talking for? Why did you call me? I just need prayer. Why am I gonna pray if you don't believe? Because you already shut God up. I'm just a man. You guys wonder why nobody likes me. This is the reason right here. I tell people straight up. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. He did everything perfect for you, for me. And God is alive. His name is Holy Spirit. And he lives right inside of you. Amen. And if you're going to tell God, I don't want it, what am I here for? And glory to God most of the time. Well, 
Sorry. I didn't mean it like that. I didn't mean it like that. I'm just frustrated because I've been this way for so long. Now God can work with something. Can you get amen? Yeah. Do you still want to be like this? No. Can we say that together? Do you still want to be like this? No. no. I pray every day, every day, that Father God changes me. Yeah. Beloved Lord, every day. Yeah. Father, change me. Amen. amen. Be careful, family, because the change comes. Okay. Right. Amen. Yeah. It can be as something as simple as, will you lay that down and do this for me? Sometimes it's, I don't want you to wear that. I want you to wear this. Say with me, P3. P3. P3, we just covered last week. Plead, personal, protect. Plead, plead the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Plead the blood of Jesus. The blood of God is our new covenant. The blood of God speaks forgiveness over you. The blood of God speaks mercy over you. The blood of God speaks restoration over you. The blood of God speaks protection over you. His name is Lord Jesus. Amen. Say with me, the blood of God. Blood of God. When you plead the blood of God, you're saying, Father, Father, don't you love it? I love watching little children. They're just so funny to me. Amen. And, I, and God took me back to, to this right now. I remember when I was real, real little. My grandma, she would tell me, keep still. And she would try to address me. And I know it's a surprise to you, but I wouldn't keep still. I wouldn't keep still. And she's like, you need to keep still so I can put your clothes on. Right? Oh my goodness, I'd be tearing off my diapers. and just I mean, it's weird to even remember stuff like this, right? But it's, it's for this moment right now. And I, unfortunately, sometimes I did get a little spanking on my bottom, right? And it's like, wake up, Paul. And now guess what? Now you just stand still, pull your hands up, right? And that shirt comes over you, right? Amen. That's what God wants to do to, do to us every day. He wants to clothe us in His blood and His righteousness. But we have to be still. Amen. Say with me personal. When you clothe yourself with the blood of Lord Jesus Christ, this personal relationship that you have with God Almighty, this personal intimacy that you have with God Almighty, no one can touch it. No one can touch it. And when you get more personal with God, Sister Denise, when you get more personal, you feel His hedge of protection, not only in you, but you feel His presence. All His angels around you, and your family. Amen. I don't live it. Amen. Even though most of my family is in San Diego and in the islands and Philippines and all that. Listen, I, I have a big God. Amen. And I know that when I bless my God, He's sending angels all over. Amen. Right? All over. Amen. All my church family. Amen. Amen. Be free. Be so this new testimony, how to, and everything, like I said, comes together. We're about to close here in a minute comes from Matthew 4, 17. We're just going to get the answer straight from the Word of God and how God's going to tie all this together. This comes from Matthew 4, 17. After Lord Jesus Christ came out of the wilderness, He layeth the smacketh down on Satan. Amen? Amen. Oh, he, he crushed him, right? Satan tried everything he could, right? He tried everything he could to tempt our God. He failed. It was already done. Amen. Look at the beautiful angels yelling over it. It's so sweet. Check this out. From that time on, Lord Jesus Christ began to preach. Remember, the question tonight is how to obtain the promise of God. You don't, you don't have to say it all together, but I need you to repeat that after me. How to obtain, how to obtain the promise of God. Are you ready to hear the answer from God's mouth in His written word? Are you ready? Repent. Say with me, repent. For the kingdom of heaven has come near. Lord Jesus Christ said, greater things you will do than I do. You know why? The kingdom of heaven is right here. 
You see, this is what's so convicting about being a beloved child of God. There's no more excuses. When something happens out of our control, whatever it is, the kingdom of heaven is here. We're living our eternal life right now. How are we going to act? Amen? Remember, our three, recovered. Amen? Resurrected. Restored. I'll plead the blood of Jesus. Amen? I'll make it personal. I'll, really, I'll make it personal. You know, you know what I love about being personal?
Go here and go there and go there and go here. Say it with me, repent. I hear a lot of them. Amen. Say it again, Pastor. He's enough. We said it before, we'll say it, we'll say it over and over and over again. If Lord Jesus Christ did not do one thing, I'm gonna worship him. I'm gonna worship him till forever. You hear me? I don't need anything. I don't need anything from God. I just want to bless his presence. Amen. How many of you know that when God's in your life, when his presence is in your life, Elder Howard, when God Almighty is in the Brady household, which he is, how many of you know that when God is there, nothing can come against Amen. God? Oh. Hey. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, right? Amen. Amen. Are we going to strive for that? Amen. Tonight's a different night. Because remember, the title of everything is to repent. Amen. Stand up with me. How to obtain a promise from God. How to obtain a promise from God. Repent. Repent. It could be as something as simple as maybe you've been doing something that you know Holy Spirit has been convicting you in. Maybe tonight's the night where you say, Father, forgive me. I repent. And when I get up off my knees, I will never be the same. I will listen to what you say. Maybe it's the way we speak. Maybe some of us, like the example earlier that Holy Spirit gave us, maybe some of us have that outburst. That's not of God. Leave that at the altar. Amen. Crucify that thing. The reason for that outburst is something is sick. Crucify it. So God promises the resurrection power that is in us. Amen. This is what the Lord said, John 14. If you keep me, if you love my command, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, if you love me, do you love Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. He said, keep my command. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate. This is the promise. To help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept this because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. For he lives with you and will be in you. This is the promise of God from the moment he spoke, let there be light. This was the promise of God that he's always wanted. Was for his presence, his light to shine through every soul that would receive Lord Jesus Christ. Say with me, I choose to repent. Beloved church family, I pray that as Holy Spirit taught this word over all of us and we heard the word of God, that all of us who have ears to hear, we decide tonight that we're never going to be the same. Right now, there's already brothers and sisters coming to the altar. I pray that we just flood the altar tonight because you know God has asked you to repent. There is no one in here right now, not one. There's not one in here that has nothing to repent about. Because if you say you know, that means you're perfect. Then why are you still here in this fallen world? You should be up in heaven. But what I want for you is for you to have such a relationship with the Lord that His presence, His anointing will flood your heart like never before. Will you do that tonight? Lift up your hands, pray with me. Let's all say this together. Lord Jesus Christ, forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Lord, forgive me that I've become familiar with you. Lord, forgive me that I hear your voice, but yet I don't listen. And Father, right now, with hands lifted high, I imitate the one that was crucified for my sin, my Lord Jesus Christ. Father, forgive me. Change me, O oh Lord. Holy Spirit, bless me with your presence in Jesus' name. And all God's beloved said,